My name is Adam Dangford, and today we'll be describing the method of eigenfunction expansion. Um, this is a advanced differential equation topic, and uh, because of that, I'm assuming that there's some basic knowledge of ordinary differential equations. Um, most importantly, the understanding of eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenfunctions is very important in this. Um, the eigenfunction will be used throughout the talk, um, so some background, background understanding is very important for this video. For this, we'll be talking about non-homogeneous PDEs, so, uh, partial differential equations. Um, and for us, this will actually be a, a linear PDE for this video. So this is given by partial V with respect to T equals some constant K times the second partial V with respect to X plus some function Q of XT. So this is non-linear, or non-homogeneous, excuse me, it is linear, non-homogeneous. It can also be written as V sub T equals K VXX plus Q of XT if you would like to use that subscript notation instead. And this is equation one. This is what we're starting with. And through this video, we're going to describe how you can solve a problem, a problem such as this. For this, we're going to be looking at boundary conditions um, that are homogeneous, just to be a little bit straightforward for this, this case. Um, and you can think about these boundary conditions as one-dimensional, as they are, um, from zero to L, so maybe like the length of a string. Um, and for, for the for homogeneous case, they're all zero. And we'll have an initial condition as well, this V of x zero. And again, to keep this as general as possible, we'll let this initial condition just be equal to some function g of x. So these three equations here kind of give us the setup for our problem. We have homogeneous boundary conditions, an initial condition g of x, along with our original non-homogeneous linear PDE. And as you could guess, we'll be solving using the method of eigenfunction expansion. So the first thing we must do, um, as I'm hoping you might know, is we need to relate the homogeneous problem, find the related homogeneous problem. And how we can do this is we kind of just, if you see that, we kind of just take off that Q, that Q function, and uh, we substitute in U's for our V. So we get partial U with respect to T now equals the constant K with the second partial V with respect to X. And again, homogeneous boundary conditions. So u of 0 t equals u of l t equals 0. So again, it looks quite similar to the first equation we started with without that uh, function q at the end. This is the big, biggest change. And now we need to find our eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions for this. And what we do is, as you might know, is to solve these, you, they have to satisfy this equation phi double prime plus lambda phi equals 0 where phi of 0 equals phi of L, which equals 0. So again, the homogeneousness of uh, those zeros. And again, this is what we use to solve for the eigenfunctions. Um, so for our case, actually here, we, we could know these. And we know lambda n would be n pi over L squared, where n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. And this would give us an eigenfunction uh, corresponding to those eigenvalues of phi n of x equals sine of n pi x over L. And that was found, again, um, because I satisfy that equation 5. However, for this video, I want to be more general. So instead of using these named ends that I've just shown, I'm going to instead just call it phi n of x um, for our eigenfunction because I want to just keep that general. So our phi n of x is going to be throughout here, and this is our eigenfunction that is very essential to uh, this, this video. So what you do for eigenfunction expansion is it consists of expanding the unknown solution v of x t into a series of the eigenfunction of the related homogeneous problem. So those eigenfunctions, those phi's, um, will then be expanded. So what we get is v of x t is now a summation from 1 to infinity of a n of t times phi n of x. Again, phi n of x, that eigenfunction. And here, equation 6, this is actually going to be our solution, um, v x of t. This is our solution. We just need to find all the components. So we need to figure out what exactly a n of t is and what phi n of x is. Well, phi n of x is just that eigenfunction that you can solve for. Um, so what else are we going to need? Um, it is important to note that these ans um, actually have are generalized. They're, ge they're generalized Fourier coefficients. However, because it's in terms of t, um, they're actually time dependent. So our an of t's are unknown, and they will need to be solved for. Um, so there are generalized Fourier coefficients, but for this case, we're going to have to still solve for this an of t as they are a function of time. It's also important to note that this is not the same as uh, the separation of variables that you may have seen in the past. Um, 
as, a, as again, a and of t are Fourier coefficients, um, not separated solutions. But again, we don't quite know these Fourier co coefficients, so we'll show how to get this a and of t here in the next slides. So it's also important to note that there are initial conditions involved. Equation 1 satisfies the homogeneous boundary conditions. Um, we can see this because vx of t and phi n of x satisfy the same homogeneous boundary conditions. So our eigenfunction and our v of x t have those same homogeneous boundary conditions. So that means kind of in the same way we can expand that initial condition g of x and we get summation from n equals 1 to infinity of a n of 0 times phi n of x. And we get a n of 0 now is a zero because it's that initial condition that we're looking at, that initial coefficient. I'm due to do some orthogonality, which I'm not going to talk about um, in depth right now, but we can find this a n of zero. Um, and it's not perfectly simple, um, but it is this, this integral from zero to l on the top over an integral from zero to l on the bottom. And um, we see our g of x in there as well as our uh, eigenfunction, um, both in the numerator and the denominator. And this is the initial value of the generalized Fourier coefficient. they will solve this and we'll just give you a number. So now that we have our initial condition, all we really need is our a n of t. Just need a n of t. That uh, sounds easier than it actually is. Um, but we're going to use a method of direct substitution. So to do this, we're actually going to have to solve for v t and v x x. Um, and this can be kind of not easy due to the fact that v of x t uh, are infinite series. Um, because it is infinite, that can lead to some problems. However, we're kind of saved in this situation. That's due to the fact that v and vx are both continuous. And because of that, we're allowed to do some term by term differentiation. Because they're continuous, we can use that, that term by term differentiation. And doing this, we can now solve for this, this v and vx, we get um, the, the partial v with respect to t equal the summation from 1 to infinity of d a n of t over dt times our eigenfunction. And then we also get the partial square root of v with respect to x is the summation from n equals 1 times a n of t times d squared phi n of x over dx squared. And then due to some uh, algebraic, algebraic manipulation, we can also show this is equal to the that uh, equation there on the right, the negative um, summation from 1 to infinity of an of t times phi n times phi n of x times lambda n, excuse me. So these are two equations here, this partial view with respect to t and this partial squared view with respect to x are, are going to be important. And what we do is we can substitute into equation 1. And we can do this because phi n of x satisfies uh, this d squared phi n over dx squared plus phi n times lambda n. Um, because that that is satisfied, we're allowed to substitute into equation 1. And plugging in those equations that we just had on the last slide, um, we get this extended equation, equation 8 here, which is our integral from n equals, or not our integral, excuse me, our summation from n equals 1 to infinity times d a n over dt plus lambda n k a n times c n of x equals this function q of x t equation 8 right here. So that is again finding from uh, that partial v with respect to t and that partial squared v with respect to t. And this is uh, that method of substitution. However, we still don't quite have our a n of t, which is really the, the last thing we have to get still, just that a n of t. But the left side of equation 8 is the generalized Fourier series for our function q of x t. So because of that, we're allowed to obtain a first order differential equation for a n of t, leading to equation 9 as written there. Again, it's pretty messy. Um, we have this d a n d t plus lambda n k a n equals this, this crazy fraction with integrals on the top and the bottom um, as written there. However, luckily, this will end up reducing when you actually take those integrals with uh, our, actual, our actual function, our actual eigenfunction. And this will come out to just some qn of t. And as we see there, that qn of t is a known function of time, namely it's the Fourier coefficient of q of x t. And again, we can kind of do this expansion where this q of x t equals summation from n equals 1 to infinity of qn of t now is that first coefficient times phi n of x. As you might guess, equation 9 also requires an initial condition. 
Um, and luckily we have an of zero, which equals the generalized Fourier coefficient for the initial condition. Um, and that came back from equation seven. So we actually already have that initial condition that we need. Equation nine is also first order non-homogeneous. So to uh, solve for this, we're going to multiply by an integrating factor, um, e to the lambda n times kt. Um, you've also hopefully at least seen this, that you can solve by multiplying by the integrating factor. After you multiply through, you can then integrate from 0 to t to get this function below a n of t times the integrating, or times e to the lambda n kt minus a n of 0 equals the integral from 0 to t times q n of t times e to the lambda n kt dt. Again, quite a few letters here in these equations, but we're, we're getting closer. Now we can finally do some uh, arithmetic with letters there to solve for a n of t, um, which is what we, we've been wanting for quite a few minutes now. So we have this a n of t equal to a n of 0, e to the negative lambda n k t, that a n of 0, given that initial condition, given or that initial coefficient given earlier. Um, we're going to add that to e to the negative lambda n k t times the integral from 0 to t, q n of t, e to the lambda n k t dt. And as earlier we said that v of x t, that summation from n equals 1 to infinity of a n of t, v n of x, is going to be our final solution. And again, that v n of x we have, um, due to this, that it's the eigenfunction that we can solve for. And now we finally have our a n of t, which is given by equation 10 and just above. And then in that equation 10, there's a q n of t, which is given by equation 9 if you would like to look back, and then a n of 0 we saw for when it was given by equation 7. So we're kind of here at the end now, and it's, it's not very simple, but it is the solution. As I said, that v of x t right there, that summation, is, is the solution, and we have all the components now. We have our v n, we have our a n of t, we have our q n of t, and we have our a n of 0. So this really is the solution to the problem, and we have come now, come now to the end of the equation and uh, described how we can solve for that that non-homogeneous PDE. The sources I've been using, um, the main source I use is a textbook written by Haberman, a textbook written by Haberman. Um, it's called Applied Partial Differential Equations with Fourier Series and Bounded Value Problems, 5th edition. Um, it's a great textbook. Um, this was from Chapter 8, Section 3. Um, and I also watched this video linked below that uh, gave some information. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Adam Bankford. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video.